the Lewis structure of calcium oxide has calcium, a metal, from the left side of that periodic table, bonding with oxygen, a non-metal, from the right-hand side of that staircase. Metals and non-metals combine to make ionic compounds because there's a transfer of electrons from one to the other. Calcium is in the second column and brings two valence electrons with it. So I'm going to draw myself the Ca, one, two valence electrons. Oxygen in group 16 brings six valence electrons with it. It's too short of the full eight that it wants. One, two, three, four, five, six. I almost forgot. I'm supposed to spread them out before I double them up. Anyways, calcium's a metal, so it wants to give away its electrons. Oxygen's a non-metal and an electronegative one at that, so it wants to accept electrons. So the calcium gives one of its electrons away to here, pairs up with that unpaired electron, gives its other electron away to the same atom. Now that electron's paired. The final Lewis structure here will show the Ca or calcium ion without its two electrons because it gave them away. There is a plus two charge, and whenever we show a charged particle in a Lewis structure, it gets square brackets, and the charge is written in the top right corner. The oxygen now has eight electrons around it, so draw them all in, and that's two more than it started with. So you gotta put the square brackets with the minus two charge. That's all there is here. This is the complete Lewis structure for calcium oxide. Would you like to help me draw the Lewis structure of magnesium fluoride? Sure you would. Magnesium is a metal. I know that because it's on the left side of the periodic table, specifically left of this staircase. Hydrogen is an exception to that rule, but magnesium is definitely one of the alkaline earth metals. Fluorine is a non-metal. It comes from the right-hand side of the periodic table. When metals and non-metals combine, you get ionic compounds. It means the metals are going to give away their electrons and the non-metals are going to accept those electrons. Let's see how that happens. Magnesium is in group two, so it brings two valence electrons with it. There's my Mg, one, two valence electrons. Great. Fluorine is in group 17. That means it brings seven valence electrons with it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice how I spread them out before I doubled them up. Now, fluorine is a non-metal and wants a full outer shell of eight electrons. It's called the octet rule. And it currently has seven, so it only needs one more electron to have a full outer shell to be stable and happy. Magnesium as is a metal and is willing to give away an electron to a non-metal like fluorine. Now fluorine has eight valence electrons. Great. Magnesium as a metal wants to give away all of its outer shell electrons though, and it still has one. Where is it going to give that electron away to? Well, if we give ourselves another fluorine atom, it has seven, just like the other fluorine brought seven, and magnesium can give its other electron away to it. This means that both of these fluorines now have a full outer shell of eight electrons. Let me draw that for you. Here's the F with eight dots. Now, that eight is one more than they brought with it. They brought seven, remember. So it has a charge of minus one. I'm going to draw two of them because we needed two of them in the end. And magnesium had two valence electrons with it and gave one electron each to the two fluorines. So now you can draw your Mg with no dots around it. After all, it gave away its electrons and its charge is plus two. This is my preferred Lewis structure for magnesium fluoride. It shows the two Fs with the minus one charges and the Mg with a plus two charge in between. The attraction between the negative ions and the positive ions 
is what makes it an ionic compound. You might be able to take a shortcut here and write two times F, just so you don't have to write it out twice. You'll also have to show that Mg, whoops, no electrons on Mg. Oh, that would have lost me marks. Mg with the plus two charge. This is also a valid Lewis structure. Find out if you're allowed to take this shortcut before you actually use it. Like I said, I teach this and I prefer this one. Here it is. Let me point the last thing out here. You needed two fluorines to accept all the electrons that magnesium brought with it. That's why the formula is MgF2, because you need two Fs for every Mg. Not a coincidence. That's the reason that's the formula. Thanks for being with me and for helping me out. You're a good person. Best of luck.